so good. The reality is that the majority of women who want to go gray will either fail to start or they won't be successful in making it to the end. In my over three years of going gray, I have found that there are five main reasons why women who want to go gray fail to complete their gray hair transition and they have nothing to do with them changing their mind about their decision to go gray. But today we're gonna talk about the five things that are really holding you back from completing your gray hair grow out. And of course, welcome back to my channel where I help women go gray in their own way. Now, it's always coffee season, but it's really getting into coffee season. And normally, I drink black coffee. Where are all my black coffee drinkers? In the fall, I do have to do the pumpkin spice. Let me know what your favorite fall coffee flavors are. Okay, let's get into it. So the first reason that most women who start their gray hair journeys don't make it to the end and you may have guessed this already, is because they quit. I've seen this so many times in my life where people decide to do something hard and then they just give up. Remember, I'm an occupational therapist, so I saw this a lot. They think they wanna give up being chained to repeatedly dyeing their hair, and they are curious about what their natural silver hair looks like. Then they get into it and they realize how hard it is and that it's not for them. And the process is just awkward and unflattering and it takes too long. So they quit, they give up. Even women who have a good sense of what it takes to go gray and grow their hair out going into it are likely to give up just because it takes so much time. And it could be so discouraging to be watching and waiting for every millimeter of gray hair to come in. Knowing how slow it takes and that it will be at least two years till you get to the end. Feeling unattractive for a good majority of it while simultaneously having to deal with negative comments. Trust me, there were many moments during my gray hair grow out that I felt like quitting. I didn't actually start to feel comfortable with the grow out until about nine to 10 months in, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't seem like a long time. But when you're painstakingly watching your hair grow, like literally watching and waiting for your hair to grow, it, it feels like an eternity. You feel like it's just never going to end. And during that time, there were many, many times that I said to myself, this is really hard. What the heck am I even doing? What if I go through all this and I don't even like it? I'm just gonna get some dye and I'm gonna dye it again. But then I would say to myself that if I quit right now, then I know for sure that I will never actually know what it looks like fully grown out. And that by quitting, I'm giving up on the possibility that I might actually love it and all that goes with it. But if I keep going, yeah, there's that there's really no guarantee that I'm going to love it, but at least it keeps that possibility there. And so I kind of played mind tricks with myself in a way to keep going because I knew that as long as I kept going that there was this possibility that I was really going to start liking it and eventually loving it. But the moment that I quit and diet again is the moment that I close the door on knowing what it will ever be like to be completely dye free and all that goes with it. And I think that part of the problem is that so many gray hair influencers make it look so easy. So especially if you follow a lot of silver hair content on Instagram and YouTube and it's portrayed as this most fabulous thing, it's the best thing ever, and not realizing that behind the scenes it's pretty freaking difficult to get to that point. And so basically because they can be really good at making it look fun and easy and completely badass, then when you get started you have no idea how hard it's really going to be in the real world. And unfortunately I can't give you the best strategy to keep you from giving up and quitting. The best thing I can tell you is that if you quit you are literally guaranteeing that you won't know if you will love your gray hair. But as long as you keep going, then you have a chance of truly loving your natural hair color. And you get the opportunity to enjoy all the benefits of being dye free. And so you keep that possibility open every day that you stay on the journey. That was the mindset that I tried to keep to help me. And then I would set little small milestones. You know, what, what happens when I get to three months, six months, nine months? And each time I would tell myself, hey, if I don't like it, I'll just dye it again. Okay, so the second reason, and you may or may not experience this, but that women fail to make it to the end of their gray hair grow out is because they become heavily influenced by the opinions of others. A lot of women start their gray hair journey thinking, I'm growing out my gray hair for myself. I don't wanna spend the money at the salon. I don't wanna touch up my roots anymore. I don't wanna dump chemicals on my head. I'm curious about what my silver hair will look like. 
I'm doing it and I don't care what other people think. But the problem is, is that you may find that the people around you, the people close to you, are less than supportive or as enthusiastic about your decision to go gray. Or they may be downright against it. You might get subtle or not so subtle comments that can really sting and make you question yourself when you were already unsure to begin with. You might be thinking that I'm going to say that these people don't deserve any sort of explanation and that these comments reflect more of their own beliefs and insecurities and have very little to do with you. And while this is very true, I do want to say that being prepared for negative comments and knowing how you will handle them ahead of time diminishes their power and their influence over your decision to go gray. If you want to be strategic and diffuse these situations before they happen, then have some level of awareness of what people are most likely to say and how you plan to respond or not respond. How you will react or respond if at all. If you're really struggling with how your grow out is going to be received by the people around you, have a good idea of all your reasons why you want to go gray to keep in your mind or to share with the people who might comment. Sometimes all it takes is clarifying your reasons for them to see why you want to go gray and to see your perspective. I mean, it's one thing if a stranger says something, but what if it's your partner or your sister or somebody else close to you? So really know your why and be prepared to stand by it to them but more importantly to yourself you might hear me saying this and think that this means that you owe people an explanation and that's not necessarily what I'm saying I mean you don't need to tell anybody you're going gray and you certainly don't need to tell them why and you definitely don't need to tell somebody that you already know is going to be unsupportive and of course you know I need to mention the fact that I don't think everyone is going to be unsupportive of your decision to go gray in fact you you might be actually surprised at the number of people who are supportive of your decision to go gray and you might actually inspire some other people that you know. But I do think that you have to have an idea ahead of time of how you plan to handle negative comments that may come your way just so that they are less likely to influence you and so that you are less likely to go back to reason number one, quit. And just remember to keep in mind that you have to consider the perspective of the person making the comment because it reflects more about their own insecurities and their own beliefs than it reflects anything to do with you. So the takeaway here is to be strong in your reasons why. Do have an idea of how you're gonna handle negative comments before they occur. And to understand the place of where the comment is coming from, that it likely has to do with insecurity that has nothing to do with you. Okay, let's talk about reason number three, and you may have not even thought about this one. And it's that you don't make it to the end of your gray hair journey and you end up dyeing your hair because a major event comes up like a wedding or a graduation. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. New anxiety unlocked. What do I do when an event comes up? I mean, who can even focus on the bride when you're sitting there with three inches of skunk stripe on top of your head? And this can be a major deterrent from starting or continuing on your journey. And I hear from a lot of women who kind of see it this way. They see it as, I need to do what I need to do to get through this event. So maybe, you know, you're, you'll just diet this one last time. And therefore you went back to number one and you quit. The event passes, you skip your next hair color, and guess what? You get another wedding invitation. And so you really need to think about how you're going to handle events where there are photographers and videographers, where pictures are gonna be taken. I mean, what, are you really going to sacrifice the weeks or the months that you've spent growing out your gray hair? All that sacrifice for just one event when there are several ways to camouflage your journey and style your hair so that it looks beautiful. And this is where women get really frustrated because they haven't thought of this ahead of time. And because the grow out can last two years or even more depending on the length of your hair, what are you gonna do? Go into hiding? We're not in lockdown anymore. So you have to anticipate that unless you're gonna go into hiding for the next two years, you will have an event to attend before you're fully grown out. So how are you gonna handle it? Because the dye free clock resets to zero every time you quit and dye your hair again. So I think we have to get away from this mindset of, you know, just I'm gonna just 
grow out my gray hair with no real plan and without knowing how to handle those occasions where maybe the skunk stripe might not be the proper attire or you don't feel like going with half grown out gray hair. You need to think about your gray hair transition as a vacation, as a journey, as an adventure, and truly ask yourself, what do I need to bring on this journey? Because if you don't plan ahead and you don't bring the right gear and the necessity for your trip, you're not gonna just be inconvenienced, you're gonna be totally unprepared and what fun is that? So we have to try to put some sort of intention into our decision to go gray. Not just the decision to go gray, but the intention of, you know, knowing what tools we're gonna need in our toolbox in order to make it to the finish line. Now let's move on to reason number four of why many women who start going gray don't finish. Okay, so this is almost the opposite of the previous category, but I find that you have two types of people who try to go gray. Either you're the type of person who decides to go gray without thinking too much about it, or you're the kind of person who thinks way Way too much about it. So basically, if you fell into category three, then you're not preparing yourself for the journey ahead. Where if you fall victim to reason number four, you have overanalyzed to the point that it's a wonder if you even start your journey. And if you do, you choose one method and you won't budge on it. And you're not actually focusing on how you're going to succeed and get through the whole thing because you're clinging on to that one way of doing it. And then guess what? You fall victim victim to reason number one and you quit. And the real thing is that you kind of need both a plan and to be flexible in your transition to gray and to succeed in completing your transition to gray. That's why it's so difficult because you need to have the intention and a plan and the ability to settle in and give that method that you did choose to use a chance to actually work for you and give yourself some time to adjust. But you also need to be open to change the plan if it's not working for you or else you'll just dye your hair. But if you get too caught up in the details and you agonize over how you're going to approach it and how only that one method is going to work for you the entire time, you're really doing yourself a disservice. I think it's really easy for women to become over analytical about how they're going to approach their grow out because after all, it's your hair. I feel like your hair is such a personal thing to you, so it's normal to want to put a lot of thought into how you're going to do it. Because we all want to look our best, even through this transition. And the thing is, it's really nerve-wracking to have your hair go through all this for all the world to see. And so sometimes I think people misplace their anxiety over starting their journey as, oh, I'm just trying to decide how I'm going to do it. Instead of actually saying that, I'm not ready yet. So I want to encourage you to ask yourself, am I taking too much time researching how I'm going to go gray, analyzing it to death? Or am I really just not ready to jump in and do it? Because if you start too soon before you're ready, you're probably going to quit. Especially if you're following a lot of Silver Sisters on Instagram, you're going to have a certain preference for some creators over others and how they approach their grow out and their journey. But what works for them may not in fact work for you. And just because that particular way of going gray doesn't work for you, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go gray and that you should quit and dye your hair. It just means that you need to find a method that works for you. If you try to go gray in a way that doesn't fit your personality and your lifestyle, then you will always go back to dyeing your hair before you complete your journey. So the challenge really is finding a happy medium between these two opposite goals. You don't wanna just jump in with no plan and no method for how you're gonna handle negative comments, or how you're gonna handle big events that come up. But you also don't wanna agonize over how you're going to do it or be so inflexible that you won't change the method when partway through it you realize that it's not working for you. You need to meet in the middle somewhere, have a plan, but be flexible. The fifth and final reason that many women fail to complete their gray hair transition is a tricky one. It, embodies some mindset and psychology, so hear me out. The fifth reason that so many women fail to complete their gray hair transition is that they are stuck in the identity of their previous hair color and they have deep-rooted beliefs about what gray hair as a hair color 
actually signifies. And look, this is something that I personally struggled with for a long time. This is a trap that a lot of women fall into when they first start to transition to gray. I have been a brunette my entire life, and despite highlighting my hair here and there throughout the year, I always saw myself as a brunette. And because being a brunette was such a part of my identity, I had a hard time seeing myself as a person with gray hair. And not just somebody with gray hair, but somebody who didn't look old, who didn't look washed out, who didn't look invisible because of it. I think that thinking this way can really just hold you back from completing your gray hair journey and realizing that your gray hair can be beautiful and sexy and vibrant. I really just want you to know that if you've been in this mindset to embrace the fact that gray hair is gorgeous and ultimately, it's just another hair color. I mean, it's funny to me now, looking back at how much of a big deal this was to me, because I now realize there is so much more to me than the color of my hair. But at the time, it was tough. And there's nothing wrong with worrying about how, you know, letting go of a part of how you see yourself is going to affect how you see yourself. But just don't let that get in the way of staying on the journey long enough to see what your beautiful silver is going to look like. You don't have to stay gray forever. You can always dye it again, but give it a chance because you'll probably love it. Now that you know the main reasons why most women fail to complete their gray hair transitions, you're gonna wanna know some tips and strategies for staying on your journey because that is really one of the key thing that sets people who quit or give up or run into these issues and just go and dye their hair again, apart from women who succeed and stay on their journey to completion. If you wanna know some underrated ways to stay on your gray hair journey and what kept me going on my gray hair journey, I made a video about it. So you're gonna to wanna to check out that video next. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you're enjoying your journey and I'll see you in the next video.